a ton of games or at least games that were in development at Bethesda Softworks were a part of the leak from the Xbox documents that are now online and everywhere. I've actually been taking a look and diving into the story behind these leaks and What's really interesting is back in 2022, there was actually a thread labeled conjecture that talked about everything on this list largely. Let's dive into the games, what I've discovered, some of the public stuff that people have been talking about already so that we can have a better understanding of what to expect from the Bethesda side of things in the coming years. <laughs> So for the majority of this video, I am going to be referring to the following document. Now, this is part of the leaked documents. This is the ZeniMax management forecast. You can see they have financial year 20 with largely titles that we knew about. Things like Doom Eternal DLC, The Elder Scrolls Online, uh, Fallout Wastelanders, etc., etc., right? Over here, you can see the projected revenue that they were expecting from a licensed IP game in 2024. And that was to the tune of $225 million. Now, obviously, we, we don't know of any licensed IP game off the top of our head, but let's start back in 2020. To start in 2020, we know about Doom Eternal, Elder Scrolls Online came out, Fallout Wastelanders came out, and Deathloop came out. Where it starts getting interesting, because there are code names on the list are in or is in 2021. When we start looking at the games on that list, we can start to sort of extrapolate some information or at least guesstimate in my opinion. Take everything I say in this video with a grain of salt because it's a lot of tinfoil hatting. So Starfield was slated for financial year 2021. It was announced for 2022. And then it slipped to 2023, late 2023. So it slipped from all the way in 2021 when these internal documents said it would be releasing to 2023. So going forward, I'm going to sort of make the assumption that a lot of the games on this list have slipped about two years, given the release cadence that they've set thus far. So Starfield slip. ESO, they're pretty good with their expansions. Redfall slipped two years. Doom Eternal DLC, I assume that game's all wrapped up. Ghostwire Tokyo, we know, came out. Fallout Worlds, a.k.a. Fallout 76, came out. And then there was Project Hibiki. Now, if that one sounds familiar to you, it's because that game actually came out also in early 2023. And the reason we know that is because there is some leaked internal documentation that refers to Hi-Fi Rush as Project Hibiki. As a matter of fact, if you look in the game code, you actually know that Hi-Fi Rush is referred to as Project Hibiki. So that is the first project code name that we know of. Now, this was great because this game came out of nowhere. Uh, it was critically acclaimed. People really enjoyed it. And it was just sort of this stealth drop, happy, surprise that we were all surprised and delighted with and that is one of the the core goals of you know microsoft basically right um i'm just going to queue up something that i'm going to bring up later but let's go back to that document because now we're going to go to the next financial year so financial year 2022 it has two things that we know about it has indiana jones it has elder scrolls online it has starfield dlc which we know about and it has an Oblivion remaster. Now it's 2023. Obviously, financial year uh, 2023 will end in March, I believe. That's how the business works. So we're going to assume at this point that Indiana Jones is a late 2024 game, that the ESO expansion hits when it normally does, Starfield hits when it normally does. The Oblivion remaster has been a surprise for a lot of people. My main question about the Oblivion remaster is what's going to happen to the fan-made Skyblivion when this releases? Now, I'm going to wait until we get to financial year 2023, but there was a leak from somebody who deleted it because Schreier said his sources said it was not true. But today we know that it looks like a lot of the stuff on the list happened to be true. We'll get to that in just a second. So... Indiana Jones, I'm thinking 2024, probably late 2024. Oblivion Remaster, 
I'm not sure when that's going to come out. Probably the same thing. ESO expansion will probably hit at the regular time. Starfield DLC, likely a lock at this point for 2024. So we're in financial year 2023. Currently, like in real world time versus this document, which by the way, was from July, 2020. I hope you're following me by the way, both in terms of what I'm discussing and on the channel. If you're not hit that subscribe button, hit that bell. Maybe it'll be easier to follow than what I'm outlining here. <laughs> uh, and if you're already subscribed, hit that like button. Because now we get into the really, really juicy stuff, in my opinion. And, and if the Oblivion remaster wasn't interesting enough for you, let's talk about financial year 2023. We have Doom Year Zero and DLC. Now, Doom Year Zero sounds cool. A lot of people are imagining this is a prequel. Uh, if it was slated for financial year 2023, I guess we're going to get a surprise drop by December. No, we're not. That game is a 20 late 2024, maybe 2025 game now, meaning the developers are just getting additional time with it. I can't imagine too many of these are going to be revealed at the VGAs and yeah, it's just, it's just not a thing that's going to happen. Maybe they reveal it this year. Uh, long and the short of it is that I think a Doom Year Zero and DLC sounds cool, though. The next one is called Project Kestrel. Now, we actually know a lot about Pro Project Kestrel, and there was an interview done, and I'll link to the source in the description below, but the ZeniMax Online creative director Ben Jones has been talking about Project Kestrel for a few years now. Here's an interview he did back in, I want to say this was 2022, but I'll link to the source in the description below where he said the following. Yeah, so uh, my name is Ben. Um, I've been in video game development for over 20 years. I am now a creative director at ZMAX Online, um, where I spend most of my days uh, running a very, very large design team. Uh, I am driving uh, an independent team working on a new intellectual property, um, and I've been doing that for about four and a half years. I'm responsible for a design team of about 50 people. Uh, we've got a development team of uh, nearly 200 at this point spread all over the globe. Um, so myself, as well as my uh, development and management partners, um, manage the entirety of, of the project at this point. Um, this is a considerable investment um, and a very large scope project. So um, a lot of that uh, manifests in day to day in terms of maintaining communications, keeping the trains running, essentially um, ensuring that everyone has the information um, and the resources that they need to solve problems all the way down the chain. Um, that's really the core of my job. Now, just a reminder, that was recorded a few years ago. So currently, we're at around five or six years of development for whatever this game is and whatever it's going to end up becoming. Now, I also had a screenshot of something open. I have a lot of tabs open right now because it's been a little crazy. Here's a post Ben Jones made on LinkedIn. Working with Colin is a true joy, and this role will make an incredible mark on his hugely ambitious on this hugely ambitious product. We have a rare opening for a lead quest designer on our new AAA IP here, IP here at ZeniMax Online. This is an exciting role on a great team. We have a lot of flexibility and location for this role. So if you know anyone interested or are interested yourself, please reach out. In addition to that, Here's a quote from a job posting that was listed online. This was first reported uh, a year or so ago by Exputer. <laughs> anyway, it's ZeniMax Online Studios is seeking a lead quest designer to join our studio for the development of our next AAA game. This is a chance to join an experienced group of developers in pre-production for a new IP. This role will collaborate with the lead content designer, lead narrative designer, design leads, and lead environment artists to drive quest content. A developer in this role serves as a key part of the content direction for a new IP and will help drive a holistic approach to quest development that includes gameplay moments, combat, encounter design, and scripting. That is a lot of information about this property that is on this document. Again, whatever this is, it's slated on this documentation for financial year 2023. Here's what we know based on everything that I just told you. It's a new IP. It's from the Elder Scrolls Online team. There's about 200 people working on it. That was two years ago, give or take. And it's been in development 
for a long time. Where is it? When are we going to see it? Very, very interesting stuff in terms of what that means for the game list. Then, of course, we have, let me just bring it back up here for a second. We have boom, the ESO expansion and Project Platinum. And I'll be honest with you, Project Platinum is sort of where I don't have a lot to say. But that's where I get into the leak from several years ago. Like Platinum, my immediate brain goes to Scalebound. Platinum Games is Bethesda working on this, fixing up Scalebound and getting it out the door. Uh, other ideas I saw floated around were like a Quake reboot. And potentially this is the code name for the Quake reboot. Because when you look at financial year 2024, you know, it's Elder Scrolls 6. We know about it. There's an expansion for Project Kestrel, which seems like an online MMO, in my opinion. There's a licensed IP game. And I'm curious, there's a rumor that a Mandalorian MMO or, or MMO RPG is in the works at Bethesda. So is that the licensed IP game or is Project Kestrel the licensed IP game? There's also the Fallout 3 remaster, Elder Scrolls Online, Ghostwire Tokyo sequel, sounds great. Dishonored 3 sounds great to everybody, right? When Googling for this, I stumbled upon an old thread that was deleted by somebody who sometimes leaks some stuff that a lot of people have said have is sort of wishy-washy, but it's from Skullzy. I don't know if you remember this, but this blew up and it blew up so much that Jason Schreier reached out to Skullzy and Skullzy deleted the original tweet. So I found the Reddit thread about the original tweet and Schreier's response. Let, let me give you context, but Trier didn't totally refute this. And I don't, it was blowing up. So Skullzy deleted it. Take it with a grain of salt, but still interesting is true. And take my whole video with a grain of salt. This is just sort of us having fun talking about these, the, this big leak of games, right? But that's the stuff I'm hearing from an anonymous source. Please take this with a grain of salt. Don't claim it as an inside statement from me. PVPVE game in dev at Roundhouse that may surprise you. We'll see. Some Elder Scrolls 5 stuff or Elder Scrolls 6 stuff that I don't particularly care about. The stuff I want to discuss are some of these other notes here. Because some of them sort of align with this new leak that we have. BGS Austin and Montreal working on Spy Team. I don't know what that is. Amondo MMO Mandalorian. I believe that's what he's referring to at Zenimax online. So that's potentially what Ben Jones is building a team of 200 plus for. There is a quick reboot in the talks. Is that project platinum? Here's what's really interesting. He called the Tez and fallout remasters via in exile. I think this part is false potentially because in exile is working on clockwork revolution. We know that now, but. I don't know. Hitting hitting those both on the money is interesting. Xbox shifting resources to assist Bethesda with massive workloads. The Elder Scrolls potential 4X strategy game. And Special Nick commented on this. If it helps, because the Elder Scrolls 6 info aligns almost perfectly with everything I've been told about it, except the Dragon stuff that hasn't been mentioned to me. Also got the remasters confirmed to me just now. Good to see others hearing about Quake Reboot and Project Wormwood also. So Nick did not take down his tweet. So the Nick tweet is still up. I feel like there was more to this. And I think Skullzy might have reacted when he got pressure from the industry calling it out. Here's specifically what Trier said. Expect a video. Well, here's Skullzy. He said, expect a video today where I break down the recent crazy Bethesda leak situation. I also reached out to Jason Trier for further clarification and got permission to share the following statement from our discussion. The video will be up later today within a few hours. Trier said, I haven't gone through every single bullet point on your list, but I sent it to someone who would know and they responded BS based on their own knowledge of at least some of the items not being true. Some of the items not being true. So what I can't say for sure that everything on the list is false, and in fact, some of it might turn out to be true via lucky guesses, the inclusion of at least a few fake items suggests that whoever sent it to you is lying. 
but now we know some of it was accurate. There is a Fallout 3 remaster in the work, or remake is specifically what they refer to it as, right? Let's look at the documentation again. So here's Microsoft's internal documentation. So Skullzy, in that thread, he called out a licensed IP game, The Mandalorian, but he says that's what Project Kestrel is. So was that a lucky guess? Was the Fallout 3 remaster a lucky guess? Was the Elder Scrolls, sorry, <laughs> was the Fallout 3 remaster and the remaster of Oblivion a lucky guess? Granted, it's two of their big franchises. Okay, I don't know. It's That's an awful lot of coincidences for Skullzy TV to get correct, right? That's my two cents on the whole situation. Very, very interesting stuff. Now, obviously, take all the project stuff with a grain of salt. We don't know what it is. But just to get you even more hyped up, way back in uh, July of this year, uh, Gav Makes Games tweeted the following to sort of sell you a little bit. He was mocking up. This is totally fake. He's just a UX UI art and design practice that he likes to do. And he was mocking up some ideas for a Mandalorian based game. And I was like, oh, Mandalorian. I don't know how interested I would be in that. And then I saw this fake concept art and I'm like, oh yeah, okay. I would play this. This looks awesome. So to get you, he even did a fake title screen. Check this out. So like pretty simple stuff, you know, a stationary Mandalorian. Obviously, if that character was modeled, you could uh, do some stuff with it. But I'm very intrigued by the concept art and the idea of what a Mandalorian MMO type game could be. This video is definitely a tinfoil hat type of video, but looking at the games coming, just what we know, the Fallout 3 remake, that is a great call. It has to be a remake. It can't just be a remaster because the Xbox already auto remastered those old games. I don't know what they're talking. Let me look specifically again on the list because they say, yeah, they call it a remaster. It is not a remake. But that's all my tinfoil hat stuff based on a few days of reading about these leaked IP. And there was actually another slide I wanted to talk about here briefly because they do mention a bit about a bit more about the games that they're talking about here uh the projected revenue from licensed ip game being 225 million dollars in finance in the same year that it releases yeah licensed ip game is supposed to be early 2024 and it projects a 225 million dollar return that seems very high here i'll just show you really quick that seems high because they're projecting that Doom Eternal by 2020 would be 390 million. And then, you know, you see how it scales down in the millions. ESO is raking in about 200 million in 2020. And it's still raking in like $125 million. That's a lot of money for a game like that. Fallout 76 is pretty low. It's time for something new to happen with uh whatever their online strategy is going to be and when you compare that to something like they're projecting 600 million dollars for starfield i don't i don't know how unrealistic or realistic that is but it's it sure is interesting and all of this was put together to get microsoft on board with buying them basically this is the slide that was presented and the the potential revenue that they could see from their audience and i'm trying to find one other th yeah here it is so they talk about a Fallout 5 performance and what they're projecting for the tentpole franchises. 40 million units at $60. I'm not good at math. <laughs> 40 million life to date shipped. Uh, yeah, they think Fallout 5 would do 25 million units at $71. I don't know what, I don't know why they said 71 for one and 60 for the other. And then Starfield, they're projecting 25 million units. We know Starfield has like 10 million players already. So yeah, just, just some interesting stuff to think about. Let me know what you think about all this in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button, hit that bell. If you're not subscribed already, thank you so much for watching thus far. Thank you so much to the members for supporting I do really appreciate you supporting this channel. If you want to become a member, click the link right down there. I had a few different type of videos that I wanted to make this week. And 
maybe I'm going to do like, there's so much in these documents. Let me know if you want to hear more about like the fact that the Xbox Series S at the time the documents were leaked was a 75% seller. And today it's like 50, 50, according to Daniel Amon and some other analysts, like, I don't know how to make a video out of that. <laughs> That's the whole thing, but maybe I will. But I want to talk about Unity. A lot of people are asking, if you're still watching, they want to know my thoughts on Unity. I think it's terrible. Uh, they want to know my thoughts on Starfield. I haven't been playing that much. I have 10 hours in the game and I need to get back into it. Been busy with life and I'm really excited about Forza. So I've been playing sim racing, get ready for Forza. So that's just what's going on with Starfield. I'll, I don't know what you want me to say about Starfield. So I see you in the comments. I don't know what to tell you. I'm going to be playing it more. Starfield's like my game. That's a game for me. So I will be playing it at a slow pace. I got to get out of here. I'm killing the retention rate on the video. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I'll see you for the next one. Check out the video from yesterday. I don't know where they pop up anymore. It's on the side somewhere. And I'll see you for the next one. Because yesterday I talked all about the seven most important leaks. So watch that. I'll see you. Bye.